Hi, this is the Philosophical Angle Program, and I am your host, The Philosophical Angle. I'm the author of four books on philosophy, one of which is The Philosophical Equations of Economics. These books are available free for viewing online at www.philosophypublishing.com. The purpose of The Philosophical Angle is to examine the nature of concepts being used in current media and compare the essence of the concept with the usage and circumstances in which the term is being used. This week, we're going to talk about trickle-down economics. Candidate Clinton derided candidate Trump in his use what she called trickle-down economics. He was speaking about free, not, free uh, the free economy and free market economics and how he'll um, uh, decrease taxes for corporations, for individuals, and he thought this would be a, a good thing of America and bring back jobs to America. But candidate Clinton denigrated this idea and was derisive in her, in her comments in a speech also about his speech. So let's take a look and find out whether uh, what tri trickle-down economics is and uh, and whether it works, and does the the riches that come to being a part of the free economic free uh, free market economy does it trickle down to all those in society, and not just stay at, at the top with the one percent? Let's find out why candidate Trump is correct. Okay, well, when you say free market economics, you kind of have to say, um, why does it work? Why is it efficient? And, uh, and, and by the way, what is free market economics? Well, I think that the first thing you do is you have, to, so you have to go, what is the nature of free? What is freedom? Okay, freedom is two-dimensional. Freedom is the ability to establish one's priorities and it also is the ability to effectuate those priorities. And so the definition of economics is the establishment and effectuation of the sacrifice to achieve a reward. So freedom we can combine with that establishment and effectuation of the sacrifice because within the sacrifice is the ability to establish one's priorities. Because priorities, because a sacrifice is is made up, it consists of the risk of the sacrifice, the information and knowledge of the sacrifice, the time of the sacrifice that it takes to do it, and the effort, the physical effort and the mental effort that it's going to take, the energy that it's going to take to do the sacrifice to achieve the reward that you seek. And that sacrifice has those four elements that we just mentioned, but it also has a fifth if it's a product, it's a physical product, so you have to add in material. So if we add in material, so we've got five parts to the sacrifice. And one of them I mentioned was internet it was information and knowledge. And a priority is a piece of knowledge. It is that which we use to order our lives. And so when we're able to effectuate or we establish a priority, we're establishing uh, the sacrifice, uh, the will to do the sacrifice. And then the ability to effectuate those pri priorities, we've, just, we've decided that we will do it and we actually start the sacrifice. So that you have it. So there's the, the, a definition of free market economics. And then other, there are others in society also that are establishing priorities, making a sacrifice to achieve a reward, or a, a reward. And this produces competition when the sacrifices that you establish are the same as someone else's sacrifices or uh, uh, priorities to achieve a <clears throat> to achieve a reward. And this produces competition when these priorities close in become, and become similar, if not the same. And that's the nature of competition. When priorities, uh, when two or more life entities have the same priorities. 
and this is inimical to a, an individual entity when two or more priorities converge they're really uh, competing for the same thing and thus it's inimical to one's own benefit um, take two fishermen uh, beside a stream if they're right next to each other and they cast in uh, their their lines and they're close to each other they end up competing for the same fish so generally what they do to in order to uh, to uh, avoid direct competition is they'll separate and one will move upstream one will move downstream so that they don't end up competing for the same uh, same fish so really um, the result of competition is the eschewment of these priorities, of the of the similar priorities, so that they uh, diverge. And uh, they do that, you change the priority, but, and you do that with knowledge. In other words, uh, priority being a part of knowledge, uh, the knowledge changes. In other words, I'm, gee, I'm going after the same fish, I guess I'll move down downstream. So our priority changes. And uh, this change of information and, and knowledge is for the good of the individual. So we change our sacrifices in, in order to uh, increase our rewards, and, and we add and subtract. We add knowledge in, uh, uh, to those sacrifices to make uh, also to make the sacrifices more efficient. So let's say uh, let's go back to our fisherman, and uh, we he decides that he wants to be a little more efficient than the neighbor. So he invents a rod instead of just having a string and putting out the string and trying to attract fish. He invents a, a, a rod and reel, and he casts out. And, and that becomes more efficient, and so the overall benefit is uh, is increased, uh, and the uh, due to the efficiency of the of the, that which he invented, using his knowledge, his effort, his time, uh, he produces new efficiencies, and that's the nature of of, uh, of economics. So uh, uh, competition is good uh, because it uh, it makes those sacrifices separate, and uh, it makes them uh, more efficient going after uh, their rewards. So the free market is good, and, and what happens is that uh, when uh, you make a sacrifice, you do it for uh, to achieve a reward that you perceive is good. And so when you achieve that, that reward, it, it contains goodness, and thus it's an individual good. Um, so we have a basic equation of economics. It's a sacrifice equals the reward. And the sacrifice of your uh, risk, your uh, information, knowledge, your time, and your effort, and uh, also material, uh, you combine those and, um, and you get your reward. And we sacrifice in order to receive that reward, which we perceive as having good for us. That is, there is goodness within that reward, and so we we have an incentive to go after it, and we seek it, and we and we strive, and and there's goodness, and so actually there's goodness in both sides of the reward because we we uh, we perceive that goodness is in the reward. So uh, uh, um, and when we get that reward and it comes to us, uh, uh, that goodness uh, uh, accrues to us, and that um, <clears throat> so now we know that there is inherent goodness uh, in the transaction. And thus, in, in economic transactions, and therefore, in the individual transactions, uh, uh, and in the uh, within the participating individuals, there is goodness. Uh, in and thus, so now we have to decide how does this goodness transfer between the economic individuals, uh, precipitating the the interaction, and thus the trickle down. In other words, you've got. Uh, the guy who invented uh, his rod and reel, and he becomes more wealthy because he's gathering more fish. He's more efficient than the guy upstream. Um, so uh, he goes home at night with more fish. So how does his wealth of, of having more food trickle down to uh, the guy who didn't do as well? Uh, so it doesn't have to be a fish. It could be any any transaction on, on Earth has that, those characteristics. And it does that through the principle of the unlimited capacity for the demand of individual goodness. Now let me say that again. This is through the principle of the unlimited capacity for the demand of individual goodness. In other words, we always want more goodness 
in our lives for ourselves and for our families. And there are and we do this. So when the guy goes home with more fish and he's got this goodness, so how does he get more goodness to come as a result of having more of the fish? Well, he can take some of these fish that he's not going to eat tonight because he can go back and uh, fish tomorrow with it tomorrow with his rod and reel and get some more fish. He takes that fish and he decides that he could possibly sell those fish and get some reward from his neighbor who uh, needs some fish. So his neighbor who wants fish and has a demand for goodness of food and the seller of the fish has a demand for other things in his life which the guy down next door might be able to provide. Maybe uh, the guy with the fish, maybe his wife is, uh, needs help uh, uh, drawing water from the well or, or needs some child care. And he goes to the neighbor and he says, look, I'll give you some fish if you give me some, uh, some help uh, with my children or drawing water from the well or whatever. So a goodness, uh, a, a transaction happens there where the fish and the, the goodness for the help, extra help comes into their, both of their lives and another goodness transaction happens because of this principle. So uh, there are two directions uh, to this type of, uh, of this goodness. And the first comes from uh, person A, who has amassed some wealth, and we just talked about the guy who came home with a little, a little extra fish. Um, and the second direction uh, is that uh, for someone B, who brings a little extra effort, he's the neighbor who doesn't have the fish, but he's got some extra time on his hands, so he brings in extra time and an extra effort, and he can sell that to A. So A goes out and seeks uh, some goodness from his neighbor B, and his neighbor B is also looking for goodness, and he's seeking it from A. So there's two directions for this goodness to happen. Um, so the seeking of this goodness progenerates cooperation in the production of the goodness, which is harbored inside the reward. And that is the, 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 that extra fish that he had. And as the, uh, the economy prolifer uh, proliferates, so does the amount of goodness and the cooperation between the society's members, as we just talked about, the new transaction happening between surplus fish and surplus uh, uh, effort. Uh, and therefore, the precipitation within the economy of this trickle-down occurs because of this new principle. And so I would like to conclude that Trump is right. Trickle down economics works. And the rich, because of the principle of goodness and cooperation, because of the principle of, of demand for unlimited goodness, will seek more things for himself that, are, that benefit himself, will then use those who can provide extra effort and time on their hands. And so there you have it. Um, candidate Trump is correct, and Hillary, I'm sorry, doesn't know a lot about economics. Thanks for joining us. And join us back soon. If you like this presentation, please subscribe. Have a good day.